Welcome everybody. We're starting million dollar domains about one minute late today. Get my uh, TV off here. Million dollar domain. I always feel like I'm channeling lifestyles of the rich and famous when I talk about million dollar domain names. I want to invite a few more people in. See who we've got today. Well, it's been another busy week in million dollar domains, companies upgrading to oneword.com domains. I think uh, embrace.com, which is Elliot's site. He's tried to highlight uh, a lot of the, uh, the recent updates. Um, Jamie Zock on his blog has done a great job, so we'll talk about some of those today. <clears throat> and, you know, there's no doubt that the world turmoil is probably going to affect million-dollar domain buying and domain selling. And at the same time, my general thought and I'll lead with this, is that I don't think domain names, million-dollar domain names, have got the liquid benefits of running up like a lot of stock market and other assets to be as much at risk when we have a, you know, some turmoil. And I think that the big move of companies to upgrade to oneword.com domain names is a multi-year move and I think you'll still keep you'll still keep happening. So I'm still seeing volume of companies moving to million dollar domain names. If the world turmoil and the inflation and gas prices and um, you know there's kind of a closet bear market in stocks. You may think your 401k is down 20%, but there's a chance more than 60% of smaller technology stocks are down more than 50%. Crypto's down. A lot of stuff is down. There's no easy way to make money right now. And I think in million-dollar domains, you're not going to get um, – You know, you're going to have to make a long-term decision, and maybe you'll get a little bit better price over the next six months uh, than times when people were just saying, this is my price, take it or leave it. Anyway, uh, Andrew Alleman does a great job um, at Domain Name Wire, and if you don't, uh, tag Domain Name Wire and follow him on Twitter and follow his blog. The reason I follow his blog is I get an email every time he posts a new story. and um, Andrew does a neat thing where he looks at the sales results as Thedu comes in and they report their top sales this week, and then he tries to see if there's a little backstory. Um, so he talks about B Capital led the list for sixty-eight thousand dollars last week. That was sold on Thedu, and. Even though uh, it doesn't resolve and you can't tell uh, who bought it, I think B Capital is a perfect example, in my opinion, of what's happened in the last two years in high-value domain names. Now, B Capital is not a million-dollar domain name. It's only 68000 when you compare it to a million dollars. But that's a lot of money for a two-word.com domain name. But I think it shows... Again, whenever there's a transaction, that means a willing buyer paid a willing seller that price for this domain name. And even though you can't go value all your domain names, if you have 
instead of B capital, if you have buzz capital, or if you have ant capital, or if you have alligator capital, you can't necessarily say that your name is all of a sudden, quote, worth $50,000. But what it does show, I believe, is that when a buyer wants an exact name and the seller holds out for a super high price, many buyers are going to pay it because the benefits that they're going to get from owning this domain name over its lifetime are going to be greater than the money that it has to pay now to buy the domain name. This is what we talked about last week. The basic equation for a smart buyer. Now, if you're trying to sell your name to a deep discount buyer, this isn't going to work. If you're trying to sell your name to someone who thinks they should get a million-dollar name for $5,000, this isn't going to work. But as we talked about last week, and you can listen to the re <coughs> recording, excuse me, the equation for the buyer is, are the benefits of buying this domain name worth more than the money I have to spend to buy it. And the one thing that's going in favor of domain names and high value domains right now is that there's a chance that the, that the one side of the equation, the money you spend to buy a premium, top tier, ultimate, premium, you know, whatever we're gonna call million dollar domain name, there's a chance if inflation continues that that money itself is going to be worth 7% less a year. And after five years, that cash left uninvested, not put to work, is only going to be worth 65% of what's, what it's worth today if the inflation continues. But as I've shared with everybody, one of the reasons that I think million domain names are a special asset and I think when you apply it to million dollar domain names, you apply it at a scale of money that makes sense for big companies and medium sized companies. <clears throat> Is that the value of your domain name when it's applied to your business and your business is increasing prices to match inflation over the next, the value of the domain name if it provides a 10% enhancement to what you're doing now or a 20% enhancement, it's going to be applying its value, its power, its prestige to higher and higher and higher amounts of money. So if you think of the equation for someone right now from a million dollar domain name, they're spending cash that may be declining in value if left uninvested. They're in a market where the easy money isn't being made in crypto and NFTs like it was maybe last year. And the thing that they're buying, the premium domain name, is going to be incrementally more valuable as the years go on because the domain name's power and prestige are going to be applied to the current value of your income each year, which rises with inflation of the current value of your valuation or your money. And so I think that this was, this was summed up best in a book, probably the best book ever done on Warren Buffett, of how he made money during the 70s and 80s when we had inflation. And how did he navigate through it and have his hedge fund slash company go up with annual rate of returns of over 100% a year? And when she went back through, this one author went back through and looked at it, she was able to determine that because he invested in brands like Seize Candy, the Washington Post, Coca-Cola, and that those brands kept their value during inflationary times because if Seize Candy is able to sell their candy for 30% more because of their company's reputation, and prices of candy slowly go up with inflation, then they're going to be able to sell at a 20 to 30% higher price as the prices go up. 
So when I think about domain names, I think of the same thing. I think the intrinsic value of a domain name is, is it going to enhance the value of a company? It's not going to necessarily make a company, although it could for a lot of startups. So I think if you're if we're in this time for the rest of the year where we're going to have an uncertain world environment, the consumer may not be as strong with gas prices, inflation is going to factor into investment decisions. You may have a better pricing environment to buy long-term domain assets. But the big moves of why companies are moving to domain assets shouldn't be impeded that much. Because I believe companies that are spending one to five million dollars now to buy the best domain name for their business, they're doing that because they think they're gonna get five to twenty million dollars worth of benefits over the next 10 years. That because domain name pricing, if you have to look at the past and it's so uncertain, it's such an efficient market, there's liquidity risk. All these things lead to the fact that people are still probably paying discounted prices to the true value of what they're buying. And that's going to be there this year, whether or not we have ups and downs in the stock market, interest rates, the economy, or global effects. So we're going to keep going with million dollar domains this year because I think we're in a multi-year move. And this B capital that I mentioned that Andrew covered with Sadu, I think it shows that small to medium-sized businesses, when presented with a chance to get the exact right name for their company, in this case, B capital, even though they could have been B capital Inc or my B capital or B dash capital, or bcapital.net, or bcapital.online. Real world people, companies, successful companies, chose to pay the $68,000 to get the best and perfect domain name for their company. And the reason is, and then I'll go back and, and introduce million dollar domains and what we try to do here. The reason I believe that a name like that can sell for $68,000 is when you're at the top of the pinnacle of the perfect domain for a company and you're dealing with incomparable other names, it, there's no easy way to determine how much better the best name is than the second best name. Except that for that company, there's something to be said for them having the perfect best name for their company, if their company is called B Capital. And to come off that and have to admit that they're second best or they couldn't get the perfect name and then apply that equation over the next 10 years, then you look at $68,000 that they paid to be bcapital.com and that's $6,800 a year, or that's $500 a month. So think about it. In a world where most companies are operating digitally or virtually, <clears throat> in this case, B Capital is paying $500 per month of allocated cost to have the perfect and best .com domain name for their company. And if you think of the fact that companies are probably not spending what they used to spend for office space and other facilities-based assets that were the backbone of what companies spent their money on, all of a sudden that $68,000 for B capital, when you, lead, when you look at it in the future, doesn't look so crazy. Now, people might say, I don't want to pay that. And when you're selling a domain name or you're buying a domain name, you're going to try to get it for the best price you can. And you'd love if you were the owner of B Capital to have bought that name for 4000 because a different seller had it and, and would sell it for that. But it just shows that we have, in my opinion, a huge amount of undiscovered upside in domain names. And I think that applies to million dollar domain names as well. 
Hey, Sam, thanks for joining us today from the UK. You ever feel when you're talking about one of your premium names to the client that even though the money seems like it's a lot, when you start talking about it in terms of the years they're going to get benefits, you almost kind of want to say, are, are you really a, a successful big company or not? Does that ever happen? Yeah, all the time. All the time. Because we think about what companies spend on leases, what companies spend on professional services and consultants and studies. And, uh, you know, right now, one of the biggest expenses companies have is recruiting, you know, trying to get people. And then what they spend on cars and transportation and conferences and travel. You know, and none of that is really that those are all going to be minor expenses that contribute to the whole company. And then we feel like a good domain name is going to be something that resonates throughout the whole company. So I'm a homer for domain names. My name is Paige Howe. I do the show Million Dollar Domains every week. We're part of Domain Club, the largest club on Clubhouse for domain names. We'll do the show today in front of a live audience, and I want to thank everybody for joining. we got a good crew today. Please come up on stage. I'd like to get your opinions about some of the things we're talking about. If you're selling a million-dollar domain name or if you just bought a million-dollar domain name or you kind of want to give me a what do you think, um, come up on stage. Second thing I'll do is I'll turn on the chat. This is a new feature for the live audience during the show. You can talk about what I'm saying or introduce other things in the chat and everybody can see it. Now, I want to emphasize this is million dollar domain names. So this is whether we say 500,000 and above because you want to sell it for a million. This is not the time to say I have uh, some dumb name dot dumb TLD. Please contact me to buy it. Um, I'm not going to go through the chat and bounce people out, but uh, but this is for million dollar domain names. This is a different this is a different show. And so if you want to comment on what I'm doing, if you want to present a question uh, that you don't want to come up on stage to do, we are recording this. Um, so we have the live audience and then we have a lot of people that are going to listen to replays. And then we also on Clubhouse now people can listen to this show as a podcast. So welcome to Million Dollar Domain Names. Uh, my name is Paige Howe. I've invested in domain names for the last 22 years. Uh, I've probably bought and sold over 10,000 domain names for almost $10 million. And I've sold $2 million domain names um, uh, back in 2007. And I started this room a couple years ago because I felt like, or actually a year ago, but I started this concept of million dollar domain names for my domain conference. And the idea that it's a different discussion. You may have preconceived notions about domain names and what they're worth based upon the fact that you can buy them for $8. But you got to remember, there's 150 million .com domain names out there. So if you're trying to compare some, something that's in the bottom half of the 150 million domain names that are literally bought and sold each year, People are buying about half the domain names that get bought every day are going to expire after a year. And that's a lot different than when you start talking about the top thirty or forty thousand dollar domain names. That's I'm sorry, the top thirty or forty thousand domain names, where you're talking about the one percent of the one percent. And in any asset where there's 150 million of something. And you're talking about names that might rank in the top 1,000, the top 10,000, the top 20,000, the top 30,000. It's going to be a different discussion. Because the other thing that's, that, that makes domain names and their valuation, I believe, completely different than anything else, is that you're not talking about 150 million of the same thing. You're not talking about 150 million pairs of Levi jeans. You're not talking about 150 million big Macs. You're not talking about uh, 150 million cars. You're talking about 150 million things. And the top 1% of the top 1% are all unique 
and and irreplaceable to the extent that once I own money.com, no one else can own money.com. Now they can own finance.com or they can own stocks.com or they can own bonds.com, but each domain name is singularly unique and it can only be owned by one person. So when we talk about million dollar domains, that's kind of the area that we're talking about. And I really have three audiences out there. If you own a million dollar domain name, you're in charge of managing it. You may not be sure what you have. You don't know if your name's worth a million dollars or you're managing it for your company. You probably want to manage that a little bit differently than someone who's managing a portfolio or an ordinary group of names. You should have two factor security on the registrar account that you own that name. Going beyond that, you can go with registrars and have that name owned in an account where literally that domain name cannot be transferred out of the account unless someone calls you and you give approval. You're probably more likely to take a name that's a million dollar domain name and renew it for 10 years in the future. That's the maximum time that you can renew a domain name. Each year, you may want to, when it has nine years left, pay for the 10th year. Now, there's a little bit of risk to doing this in that a domain name, much like an NFT or a blockchain asset, is purely managed by the email address of, of two different sources. One, the email address for the account that owns a domain name can log into the account at a registrar like GoDaddy or Namecheap, and they can make changes to that name. So the email address of the account owner that that name is in is critically important. And if you're in a company, I believe you wanna make sure it's clear that whoever is managing that account, that it's clear that they're managing that account for the benefit of the company. In other words, if I worked for my company's called Joe Domains and, and say I was just an employee at Joe Domains, I might have the email address page at joedomains.com. And that may be the email address that controls a registrar account. But you're gonna wanna make it clear in the way you list your ownership of that name, the agreement that you have with that employee that they do not own that name, even though they own the email address that logs in. It's kind of like if you give your employee the um, key to a safety deposit box or a PO box. Well, you give the company the key to the PO box, you give the employee the key to the PO box so they can go get the mail each day. But that doesn't necessarily mean they own that mail. There's a $10,000 check that comes in they can't just take the 10, say there's $10,000 of cash that comes in. They can't just take it. So you want to just think about that because a lot of uh, companies that started out, they might put their domain name in the name of their technology consultant and say, hey, can you just get that domain for me and then do it? And over time, some of the technology consultants tried to kind of mooch in there and try to say, well, no, I own that domain name or I bought that domain name because they control it. So if you own a high value domain name, I would encourage you if you're a domain investor to put your $100,000 and above domain names in a separate account, maybe at a separate registrar, <clears throat> maybe renew them out for future years, maybe put the highest level of security protection you can have on them. Then the last thing you wanna do is you probably wanna use maybe a monitoring service. And I know Domain IQ has this and Domain Tools has this. And literally you can put in your domain name or even your email address and they'll email you each day if any changes have been made to that domain name's internet record. And, and, and that could be important because you may not find out if someone was really savvy and really good at being able to, to get your domain name, to fake the registrar out, um, to call in and convince them that they had the password. You may not always find out if your name's gone. You think you should, but you may not. 
So anyway, that's managing million dollar domain names. Second audience is people that buy and sell million dollar domain names. You may be trying to buy domain names for 50,000 and sell them for a million. You may be trying to take a million dollars of capital, put it into two or three names and grow it. You may be a hobbyist, you may be a collector, you may be a broker. You may have said that if you've got the brokerage skills to sell domain names, why not do it on the highest names you can find? And the best way to learn about million dollar domain names and the way to learn about this market, in my opinion, is to find somebody with a high value name and pitch them on letting you go sell it. Because you're going to talk to real live customers. You're going to learn what they think about domain names. You're going to learn the questions they have about domain names. If you ever do decide to invest your own money in million dollar domain names, you're already going to have an idea of what customers want. And in exchange for signing up and signing a brokerage agreement where you're going to get paid a commission to sell that name, you get a chance to have real life conversations with a real live domain name. So you don't just have to ask somebody, what do you think about, you know, buying a million name, a, do a, mi a dollar domain name, for a million domain name? What do you think about buying a domain name for $3 million? Do you think your company would ever spend two and a half million dollars? You can have conversations with people and say, what about this specific domain name? And I think that's probably the best way to get into million dollar domaining, unless you have, you know, a lot of money, $20 million, $30 million. And then the last group we talked to here is people in the domain industry, where a lot of the things that apply to million dollar domain names, maybe the same type of trends and the same things that are happening there are happening at smaller levels throughout other TLDs, uh, managing domain portfolios, or just the whole business. It's nice to have some million dollar stories when you're talking to people and they say, oh, domain names aren't worth anything. And you can say, well, just in the last month, there's been reported sales of over $17 million of individual domain names. There's been 20 to 30 transactions that are probably over a million dollars where they didn't report the price. And the overall domain market is almost a billion dollars of direct registrations and maybe as much of that or more in resales. And if someone doesn't want to hear the truth, they're going to blow off that. They're just going to say, oh, that's not true. But if someone's really seriously looking at it and hearing that there's billions of dollars of turnover every year, you know, domain names are a serious business and million dollar domain names are a serious business. <clears throat> so anyway, that's most of what I brought to everyone today. Let's see if we have any new million dollar domains or million dollar questions going on. Let's see. We haven't got anybody in the chat. We'll see who our first chatter is today. Um, let's see what else happened in Andrew's report of say to sale for the week. We had Noba.com go for $60,000, N-O-B-A. And this is what we call in domain investing a CVCV, meaning it's a consonant vowel, consonant vowel. And I think, you know, Hulu is probably the best example of this type of name that, in my opinion, a lot of startups were using because they were priced out of one word domain names that were in the millions of dollars. So you used to be able to get these CVCV names in the thousands of dollars, under 10,000. So now we have a company called Noba Project, and they're going from NobaProject.com which they may have started with, they may have hand registered it, just bought it for the regular fee. And they've paid $60,000. Uh, this is a nonprofit that paid this money. The Denier Education Fund bought this domain for their project, um, which makes textbook-like education available to the masses. And this is from Andrew Allerman's research on Domain Name Wire at DomainNameWire.com or DNW.com. And so if someone says, well, you know, why would someone move up from NobaProject.com to Noba? 
this company's doing it and they're paying $60,000 to move up from a two word.com to a cvcv.com. Another sale that happened last week was mybff.com for $25,000. Andrew was able to find out that this company teaches crypto and web three topics. Their title tagline is empowering a new age of friends who crypto. And so they may have thought, hey, let's get BFF.com. And if BFF.com was owned by another domain investor, maybe that was $700,000. And I think one of the first derivatives that a lot of companies go with um, is a my, or maybe get, or maybe hey, or maybe an I or an E at the beginning. So here's a case where they went for MyBFF.com for $25,000, real life. And let's see, uh, had an interesting name on the, the Sadu list. This is Andrew Alleman on Domain Name Wire reviewing the list of names that sold on Sadu. And Sadu's reporting of their domain name sales is one of the valuable tools that we have in the industry. Because in my opinion, it's one of the few places where we're seeing retail end users and what they pay for domain names, meaning a lot of the reports that you get about domain name sales are wholesale investors buying expired auction inventory, um, buying an e-liquid asset that they're going to have to hold for two to five years. And they're probably hoping to buy that at a 70 to 90% discount to its market value. <clears throat> and when they sell it at its market value, we may not see that publicly reported except for some of the domain investors like Braden Pollock, who do report their domain name sales, which, which helps everybody. But Sadu is one of the places that they're a retail exchange. I talked about them on Monday quite a bit. And they do report their sales each week. So here we have my BFF, $25,000, which gives you a really good comp if you've got a similar name with a text message abbreviation with a my or an I or a hey in front of it. And again, whether or not you get $25,000 is gonna depend on the unique desires of your buyer and, and what you need to get out of the name. But I think you know keeping an eye on these comps and especially some of the backstory should be really valuable for most domain investors. The other one that happened was on the list for $5,000 was partful.com. And I think this is an interesting group of domain names that's gotten more popular in the past five or six years, which we call maybe a brandable. And partful is kind of interesting because is it a dictionary word or is it a brandable? You have this ending full, F-U-L. And I don't know if people use the word partful in everyday conversation. So I'm going to say that this is uh, a brandable. But if you think about the fact that people are used to putting full at the end of different words to derive their meaning and you still get some of the credibility of the main word part. So this company didn't have to buy part.com. They got partful.com. Um, and this is a company called Samson VT. They help companies with after sale activities such as providing virtual product manuals. So now they've been able to brand their business involving virtual product manuals as partful.com. And that's a seven letter name. It's a one word to the extent that you're not having to remember two words. And if you do have a two word name, you always have the idea that those two words could be shifted around in their order. They could have a dash between them. There's more and more substitutes for them. But in this case, they got partful.com for $5,000. And I think they're probably happy to get it. I think when they talk about their company, when they talk about their product, they're going to say partful. Our product's partful. The partful a group of products does this for you. Be partful. Use our products. And when they say contact me, it's going to be page at partful.com. So these are not always quantifiable benefits like maybe the domain space had 10 years ago when you can say, well, if you own part you know, something.com that you're going to get search engine placement because you have the word part in your name. 
And I think those were more quantitative reasons to buy a domain name. And now we're dealing with more subjective, you know, reasons to buy a domain name. But this is why I think this is important. This is one of the main things I'll be talking about this year on million dollar domain names. I think in general, companies profit equation in today's market is such that they're trying to do everything they can to convince people to pay the highest possible price many times because of how they feel about the company that they're doing business with. That's a lot different than maybe 30 years ago when a lot of business was based upon what I'm going to call cost accounting, meaning if it costs a certain amount of money to make a car, then the company marked that up 20%, and that's how much you paid for the car. And if another company wanted to only mark it up 15%, they could. But really, you were limited by this idea of a certain amount of profit, a certain amount of reasonable money that you could expect to pay over the cost to make something. And I think we've changed amazingly in this regard, where now you see startups trying to come up with products that they can charge you per month for, per year for, one-time charge, but they're trying to get you to feel like you want to do business with that company in such a way that you'll pay X or 2X or 3X or 5X. And their profitability, we've seen gross margins for technology companies go from 20 to 30 to 50 to 80 to 90 percent because of this idea of how you feel when you buy a product from that company. So if you think about what a domain name can do for this type of company, they can contribute to this aspect of how you feel about the company you're doing business with. And if they have a short, dominant one word domain name, that's going to contribute to the idea that you're doing business with a strong, established, viable leader in their business. Now, it's kind of counterintuitive because the more money, if you buy something from a company and they're making a huge amount of profit, you're kind of getting ripped off. That's the way I used to think. But now as a business person, you have to say, no, everything I can do to make someone perceive more value about what they're buying from me, I'm gonna make more money year after year after year after year. So when I bought the domain name milliondollardomains.com, milliondollardomains.com and milliondollardomains.com at the beginning of last year, it's because I felt that if I'm gonna have a consulting business where I help companies uh, acquire million dollar names, I help companies structure their names for sale, um, I don't really do as much brokering as I do trying to help people reposition their names to get the, the, the amount of money that they want. And I do it on an hourly basis. But I felt that being million dollar domains was gonna give me over the next 10 or 20 years, much more prestige and much more benefit than the $3,000 I paid for that domain name. And if you start applying that to companies that are looking to do five and 10 and 20 and $50 million, and they're looking at all kinds of things in the cost component of their business, trying to save money as best they can, but they're also looking at things that'll let them charge the most money that they can. And I think buying and acquiring a premium domain name that is gonna both be your address, how people find you, to interact with you and potentially even buy your product where you don't have to go through a distributor. You don't have to go through a sales uh, a company. You don't have to pay anyone else a commission. You can deliver your product direct to consumer. Then you want everything about how easy it is to do business with your company. Everything about how easy it is to remember the name of your company to be contributing to your profitability. And I think that's what domain names do. And so if you are a company that's gonna have annual sales or turnover of 10, 20, 30, $100 million, and you could be 1% better, 2% better, 3% better, you're talking about applying 3% to $10 million and doing that for the next 20 years. And all it costs you is money 
which right now is pretty plentiful and might even be declining in value if we get the type of inflation that we're having in the past year in effect continues. I think that's a rational, reasonable case for companies to look at million dollar domain names. And the pricing that they're gonna see in the marketplace is most of the time gonna be simply the imagination of the seller. Have they always wanted to sell it for a million dollars? Have they always wanted to sell it for two million? That's really what a seller is looking at, is they wanna know, where should I sell a name? That's probably the question I get the most. They're kind of a little bit afraid that they're gonna sell it too low. They're wondering if they should hold on and maybe get more. And a lot of times sellers of million dollar domain names, it's not just about the money, it's about did I do the right thing? Did I sell it at the right time? And a lot of times their identity can be wrapped up in that name. Where for five or 10 or 20 years, if they bought the name back when when names were first registerable, they've always thought, well, I'm gonna be worth $20 million because of this domain name that I have. I'm gonna be worth 5 million or 10 million. And in different times in 2000, they may have thought they were worth 30 million. In 2003 or 2002, they're gonna worth 2 million. 2007, they're up to 10 million on a great domain name. 2008, they're down to 2 million again. 2014, maybe they've come up to 3 million. 2019, they're still at 3 million. 2020, all of a sudden they can get five. And boy, when you've been thinking your names were two and now you can get five, I think that's the type of thing that's happening with sellers in the market. So if you're going in to buy, one of the best things you can do, I think, is clearly do the work to establish what you're willing to pay for the domain name. And a lot of times you can ask a little bit more, you can offer a little bit more than what the seller thought he was gonna get for the name to lock it up, get a transaction done and dusted. You have the name, he has the money before someone starts thinking, well, I wonder if someone else will pay more. I wonder if someone else will pay more. And if you're a company out there buying a domain name for $2 million and 10 years from now, you're probably going to look back and say, it's one of the best investments our company ever made. It's probably likely that you're going to have the same feeling, whether you paid $2.2 million or $2 million. So if you can kind of shock and awe a seller by paying a little bit more than they think they wanted or you think that they would sell for to make sure you get the name, that's going to stop you from going through another process that can happen with million dollar domain names. And I'll close with this. A lot of buyers and sellers of million dollar domain names have been going back and forth with each other for years with the seller constantly moving the price up. 500,000 to 800,000 to a million two to a million eight. The buyer always wanting to pay about 30% less than the name was being offered at. They never come to a deal. And in times like the last couple of years when the market gets better, the seller moves their price up. And that buyer is constantly chasing that price up because they always want to get a deal. They always want to get it for a little bit less than the seller wanted. They want to win the negotiation. And I think if you're buying as a collector or it's not a name you really need, it's a name you'd like to have. But if, you, if you're a company that's in charge of buying an asset that'll help it out, I think you've got a chance. Once you've made the decision, you've got buy-in among all your various groups that this is the way to go. I think you need to take the name down, try to get a transaction done. Because if not, you can be chasing it for years as that seller keeps moving the bogey, keeps moving the target. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about and get on the, the podcast for today. I appreciate everybody joining me here in the live studio audience of, uh, of Clubhouse. And I'd be interested to see if anyone had any thoughts, positive or negative, on what I've shared 
about million dollar domain names, about the market, and to summarize about this idea, as we really dived into last week, that in a domain transaction for a million dollar domain name, the buyer's equation is this. Will the benefits that this asset offer me, offers me, will the benef benefit that this name offers me be worth more over time than the money I have to spend to buy it? And right now there's a chance, in my opinion, that million dollar domain names are being bought and sold sometimes based upon the benefit that they're going to provide for the in the short term just to help get a, a deal closed to help get a funding done um to kind of check a box that a company went with two words and everyone always says well why don't you just get the one word and they're just like yeah let's go ahead and get it and they're making this decision based upon the shortest of term thinking and, and I think in many cases, you know, you, you've got a chance where when you start applying the benefits of these names over time and you start accumulating the benefits over 10 and 20 years, that I think it is going to make people look back on some of the values that are happening today and say, remember when, remember when in 22. So back to this equation, are the benefits that a buyer is going to get worth more than the money they have to spend? And now we have this idea right now that the money they're spending might be decreasing in value <coughs> as unused and uninvested cash is subject to kind of an inflation depreciation of as much as 7% a year. Versus the fact that if your company does two or $3 million worth of business or 20 or 30 or 200 or 300, you're probably going to be slowly raising your prices. And if a good domain name helps your business one, two, five, or 10%, its value is going to compound over the years. And its earnings power is going to be applied to a bigger and bigger number, which means if in the future, five and 10 years from now, you sell a domain name for 20 times its earning power, or 10 times, or five times, or 100 times. That number is going to be even greater than probably what you paid for it today. So anyway, that's the equation. Let's see if I have prompted any questions from anybody. All right. If anyone's got a million dollar domain name, they got a question about a domain name they're thinking about buying. Uh, I'll kind of do a little ask me anything here on million dollar domain names or what do I think? And then if you've got a show on Clubhouse this week, <clears throat> I really think Clubhouse, even though the number of people in the domain space that are using it may have dropped, the platform's actually gotten better. And so I think I'm going to start to do more off Clubhouse publicity to bring a lot of people back because between being able to chat during the shows, being able to do clips, being able to do replays, being able to listen to podcasts. Um, I think the platform's actually gotten better and improved uh, since it started. And, um, and I think it can be valuable. And even though there's Twitter spaces and some other things that happen, you know, I think Clubhouse, if, if it came out again today, I think, uh, I think it, it might be the best audio chat out there. So... Let's see what's going on. DR, how you doing today? What brings you up on stage? You have to hit your mute button off. I'm from India. All right. That's fantastic. I congratulate you. Did you have a question about domain names today? No, dear. I, I don't have such type of questions. But uh, one thing... Uh, I want to say that uh, what about the war? What do you think about war? Do you think it should be stopped? Yes, I do believe war should be stopped. But uh, I, there's some great rooms out there on Clubhouse that I listen to a lot of people that have different opinions on that. And we're going to talk about million dollar domains here. So I'm going to go ahead and move you down to the audience. All right. 
<clears throat> Let's see. We have a, a question from the chat. Can you say something about the value difference between two word with or without the hyphen? That's a good question. The hyphen, um, the thoughts about hyphens and domain names haven't changed in 15 or 20 years. There's literally like one article that was done that said Germans like hyphens. And everyone repeats that article over and over again. Um, and then there's a thought that the hyphens are terrible for domain names. Um, and, and that started from the fact that when we first used to navigate with our little Motorola flip phones, you had to switch the entire screen that you were on to type in a hyphen. So if I was Joe Domains and you were typing in the web address, you'd have to type in J-O-E, then switch screens, hit the hyphen sign, then go back and hit domains. And whether you're texting or whether you're typing it in a browser, you know, functionally that was just difficult. But I think the big thing that hyphens have going against them is the fact that they're always going to be compared to who has the domain name without the hyphen. Now, when if you're doing a site for Google and you just need something, anything, because you're going to spend $10,000 a month, you know, buying paid advertising traffic, I think a hyphen domain is probably fine. But I think if you're trying to extract value from somebody, I think it's always going to be about the same as a .NET, maybe, a two-word hyphen. So if I had baseballcards.net and I had baseball-cards.com, I'd say those are probably going to be about the same. They're both one off of the best thing, baseballcards.com. But it's all going to be up to people's personal feeling. There may be some people who say, I would never buy a hyphen. I might buy the .NET. And then other people might say, I don't want a .NET. So I think that, you know, opinions are going to be varied. But most of the time you're dealing with a subpar domain name and you're trying to ask people, you're trying to get them to think, how much less valuable is this domain name than what you really want? And, and can will you pay me something? for that domain name as a seller. And I just think it's a frustrating, you know, part of the business to be in. But if you have hyphenated domain names and you list them on Afternic, I think they'll sell. They'll sell about the same as other domain names. If you have a hundred of them, you might sell three a year if they're good. I mean, if they're good two words that go together and you've priced them right. So I'm not as against them as some other people, but you're going to have to commit to renewing them maybe three to six years again to sell three out of every hundred. So that's the best thing I can say about them. Let's see. We got one other person popping up. Well, they're not there anymore. Let's see if anybody else is in the chat. Uh, Hyphen dash minus. Yeah, that is true. Whether it's a hyphen, a dash, or a minus, thanks, Jeff. Um, you, you have to say it in a different way. And I think it's funny because that applies to the dot also. Um, I think one of the things that the, the people that are in new TLDs don't realize, but I learned it a long time ago with dot TV, was that I really had to feel when I sold people TV domain names that they're buying a dot TV because that dot is going to be part of their name. You know, um, when I do the work I do with dot LA, you know, you're going to be restaurants dot LA and, and the dot really becomes a part of it. But I think with com, if your company's called restaurants, your company's called Joe domains, the com is kind of assumed. Um, let's see. Someone asked about fsdcars.com. Full self-driving, apparently, is what FSD stands for. So I like the idea of going for future trends. <clears throat> um, and, and I think it's good to know a word that's, you know, maybe everyone went for self-driving cars. People went for autonomous cars. I'm sure people have gone horizontal, meaning they've bought all kinds of autonomous car blog, autonomous car guide 
buy autonomous cards. I think they've probably gone vertical buying autonomous cards and all kinds of other TLDs. So you found another abbreviation that might be just as good. And I would just encourage you that if you were able to find it four years ago, I would feel better about your name. But if you just bought this in the last month, that means that no one else in the world thought they were going to be called FSD cars. And I think when you buy low value names or hand reg names to try to catch a trend, the part that's the most dangerous is when you had to be super early to buy it. The word hasn't really caught on and you may have to wait three or four years for it to catch on. So I haven't seen FSD a lot, but it sounds like full self-driving. It's a lot easier than saying autonomous. So I kind of like it. Let's see, Sam asks, what are your thoughts on domain hacks? I think they're cute. Um, you know, it's a good area to invest in because you can use your creativity to go find a name. Maybe, And, and for those of you who are listening, domain hacks means you're, you're creating a word, like maybe if you had crypto, which is C-R-Y-P-T-O, Maybe you found a way to buy CRYP.TO. And TO is an aggressively marketed but rarely used extension. Um, it used to be used for Toronto or two. But anyway, so say you buy it CRYP.TO. So you just want to say our company's called Crypto. And it's kind of cute and you have a little dot in your logo. So that's a good example of one of the best hacks that might be out there. And what you're hoping is you're hoping that someone else also thinks that. And they want to pay a bunch of money for it. Most of the time, people that are creative are trying to use their creativity to save money. So they may think, well, I'm going to think of another cool domain hack where I don't have to pay you as the domain investor a bunch of money so I can save myself a lot of money with my creativity. But if you do stumble upon something that's valuable, it's really going to be a discretionary purchase by someone who just says, yeah, I want it. And you're going to have to catch them at the right time. Even wholesale investors aren't going to give you a big price for a hack because most of the time I think they're going to say, I can go figure out my own and buy it for a cheap price. But anyway, those are my thoughts on hacks. Let's see. I like this chat thing. It does allow me to answer more questions. Let's see what we have. Doug, you've been a great guest for me. Site build it and occurrence hyphens. Yeah. Wow, Mike Gilman, our resident researcher, has come up with 4,000 domains that start with FSD. I may have to rethink my initial opinion of FSD. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> yeah, someone commented about the German... Uh, the German thing for hyphens. And again, I think it all comes from one blog post years ago. <clears throat> well, anybody, thank, thank you everybody for coming to Million Dollar Domains today. Um, you, can, uh, you can follow me here on Clubhouse. You can hit the link if you're listening to a replay to follow Domain Club. Um, we are going to increase the offerings that we're doing on Domain Club. If you're listening here and you want to do a room in Domain Club during the week, you can do it whenever you want or you can have a scheduled time and um, we can make you kind of an expert or, you know, a, a moderator in Domain Club. And when you start your room, there'll be notifications that go out to the 36 or 3,700 people in Domain Club. And we just kind of offer that up. Uh, we don't charge anything and, and we don't pay anything. So it's a zero, zero sum game. But, um, you know, it might be able to give you a little community to help start a show here on Clubhouse. And then I would come in and try to help you and give you a little boost. And, uh, and you know, I think there's probably about eight or nine really good weekly shows, you know, on Clubhouse. And there's a great community that seems to be on here all the time. So anyway, I wanted to offer that out for Domain Club. I would encourage everyone, if they can and they have any extra money, uh, I know either through Namecheap or through um, 
other companies that are supporting a lot of the people in Ukraine um, through the domain community, where some of the domain companies have a lot of people working there. I think if you go to Namecheap, they've got a link to a pretty trusted charity where you know the money is going to go to the right place. But I do want to say a prayer and, and put my, my best thoughts uh, for the people in Ukraine right now. And thanks, everybody, for coming. We'll see you next week on Million Dollar Domain.